All right, what's going on, guys? It's Epoxy, and Night City Wire episode 4 just occurred yesterday with the event itself giving us a load of new info for Cyberpunk 2077. But we also received a ton of images and info following the event as well. So, without further ado, let's roll the intro. So, during Night City Wire Episode 4, we got two new breathtaking gameplay trailers, first of which being the Cyberpunk 2077 Rides of the Dark Future trailer, which focused on the many types of vehicles we'll be able to drive around Night City and the Badlands, which my top five consists of the Rayfield Caliburn, Quadra Type 66 Herrera Outlaw, Johnny Silverhands Porsche 911 Turbo 930, and of course, the Mackie Guy My My. But I would love to hear your top five from the trailer down in the comments. The second was the 2077 in style trailer, which gave us a look at the different styles in Night City, which is found in cars, clothes, guns, and implants. There are four visual styles evident in the Night City of 2077, that being kitsch, entropism, neo-militarism, and neo-kitsch. This trailer also gave us a very brief look at the updated character creation menu, which a lot of people have been begging for. We can see preset options, a selection for voice tone, which which gives a masculine and feminine option in which your character will be referred to as she slash her or he slash him by the voice tone that you select. And then there are also options for skin tone, skin type, hairstyle, hair color, and eyes. We can also tell by the slider on the right side that there are many more options beyond what we see here. And another thing to note here is that it does look like skin tone and hair color will offer some more advanced customization. As we can see, it doesn't have the numbers for the predefined preset and will likely open into a color customizer. Now, I'm personally hoping that we get an even deeper dive into the character creation for the game closer to launch, so we might just see that at Night City Wire Episode 5. I also want to note that I will be doing a super in-depth analysis video for both of these trailers, so keep a lookout for those in the coming days. There is a lot to go over in both of these trailers, so you do not want to miss out on those uploads. Now, we didn't just get gameplay trailers at the event. We also got a load of new info, some behind the scenes on development, and a new CGI trailer. So starting with the behind the scenes revving up Night City, which gives us a look at the attention to detail for the development and implementation of vehicles in Cyberpunk 2077. Not only did they ride along and record the vehicles in movement with a very well-known racing driver in Poland at the wheel, they did this with a wide array of vehicles, including off-road cars. And on top of all that, they also got a sound team that was able to set up and record the sounds of over 40 vehicles. That isn't very common for a game that isn't a racing game. You have to remember that this is an open world RPG game. The cherry on top has to be the detailed recordings they did for Johnny Silverhand's original car, which is the Porsche 911 930 from 1977. It's said to be the only car that will truly sound like the real world car in the game, which is thanks to the very detailed recording process. And I'm just wondering, does this mean rolling up and down your windows confirmed? Next up is behind the scenes Arch Motorcycle with Keanu Reeves and Guard Hollinger, which is the reveal and look at the collaboration with the Arch Motorcycle Company, a custom production motorcycle company co-founded by Keanu Reeves alongside Guard Hollinger in 2011. Not only were the motorcycles used for sound recording purposes, but one particular model has been cyberpunk editioned for the game. That being the Arch Motorcycle Method 143. So yes, it will be rideable in the game. And if you want an idea of what it sounds like, I think Keanu demonstrates that perfectly. Or should I say, breathtakingly. It has a sort of a racing engine in it compared to our production motorcycles. It has a, a dual exhaust system and it sounds pretty... <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. I could definitely blindfolded tell that that's the method 143-ish sounding motorcycle, yeah. Nature of the role-playing aspect of the game, I think it'll be cool like to be on a bike and hearing that going through the city streets and getting into the madness of mayhem. 
Now, while we're on the topic of Keanu Reeves, we might as well take a look at the in-game screenshots we got of Johnny Silverhand's Porsche 911 930, which looks almost as breathtaking as the man himself. We got multiple angles of the car in the mechanic shop out in the Badlands, including some more close-up detail shots. And of course, we got some interior screenshots as well. This is the only known fully licensed car in the game. And this is a collaboration between Porsche and Cyberpunk 2077. And for those of you that don't know, Johnny Silverhand did have a Porsche in some of the older lore. So there is actually a basis for this being a thing. So I genuinely question on how V will go about acquiring the car in Cyberpunk 2077, but I'm all for it. It's a 100 year old car in 2077 and will be very unique to anything else available in the game, as it is one of a kind. We also got images for a ton of other vehicles in the game thanks to a press release from Twinfinite. So let's quickly run through those while we're at it. Starting with the Arch motorcycle. This is the motorcycle I was talking about that will be available in the game. We then have the Archer Quartz Nomad, Archer Quartz Basic, Chevalon Thrax Combat, Brennan Apollo Basic, Brennan Apollo, Chevalier Emperor Basic, Chevalier Thrax Basic, Herrera Outlaw, Mahir Supran Basic, Mackie Guy Mai Mai, in which we got two images, the Mizutani Shion Basic, the Mizutani Shion Nomad, which we also got two images for, Quadra Turbo Basic, Quadro Turbo R, Quadro Type 66 Basic Samson, Quadro Type 66 Avenger, Quadro Type 66 Nomad, Quadro Type 77, and this looks like the Dukes of Hazard car. It's got the orange, it's got the number one on the side. We then have the Rayfield Erendite, the Rayfield Caliburn, which we also got two screenshots for. This is one of my favorite cars in the game. The Thornton Colby Basic, Thornton Colby Nomad, Thornton Colby Pickup, which was another twofer. Thornton Galena Nomad, Thornton Galena El Ducados, Thornton Galena, Thornton Mackinac, Vilfort Alvarado with a look at both sides, Vilfort Cortez Basic, VTech Norlean, and lastly, two shots of the Yaiba Kusanagi motorcycle, which as you can see is two different variants. So we'll be taking a deep dive into many of those vehicles during the Rides of the Dark Future trailer analysis video, so I'm personally very excited for that one. One thing I do want to note is a common bit of criticism about that gameplay that was shown at Night City Wire Episode 4, and that being the ghosting that we saw behind the vehicles in movement. So Marcin Mamat, global community lead at CD Projekt Red, has thankfully responded quickly to this concern on Twitter, stating that it was indeed an issue with TAA, and it's already been fixed in the game. So that sort of gives us an idea that this gameplay was likely recorded a while ago as well. So yeah, it's fixed. Now during the event, there was also the Diner CGI trailer, which was created in assistance by Goodbye Kansas Studio, which creates award-winning visual effects, digital animation, and motion captures for TV, movies, game trailers, and commercials. The trailer itself gives us a look at V without any cyberware, sitting down to have a conversation with a currently unknown man who might be a fixer, but we're not quite sure as of yet. But he does ask V, so what do you want? For suggesting a supercar, which gives us the CGI clip of the Rayfield Caliburn, which we did see in the previous commercials played at the NBA Finals. The second suggestion was a big house, giving us a look at the Arasaka Mansion in North Oak, which we got to see in game during the postcards trailer. But this gives us a much better angle. He then asks V if they want to rule Night City, with a clip of a girl getting out of the pool. He then states that V isn't getting anywhere without an upgrade, which triggers the montage of installing some cyberware. We've got the subdermal grip, a stronger spine, and the Kuroshi optical scanner. The reasoning is, Just taking over Night City ain't gonna be easy. <laughs> Now, another thing that will make taking over Night City a bit easier is the recently revealed Cyberpunk 2077 The Complete Official Guide by Piggyback, which features a ton of guidance in different areas of the game, such as cast your character, 
the main character V can be personalized in countless ways. In addition to the cosmetic options you chose during character creation, V evolves according to your personal playstyle and role-playing preferences. Assigning your hard-earned resources, particularly your attributes and perk points, determines your proficiency in a wide range of activities. A versatile solo developing all combat-related abilities to their fullest, a master crafter with always the right tool for each situation, a silent ninja who can release punishing damage with shotguns if detected, an athletic netrunner definitely navigating arenas to wreak havoc among foes, virtually anything is possible. There is no right or wrong way to build your character, only a vast range of playstyles to choose from. The guide documents all the tools and all the resources at your disposal. Two dedicated chapters plunge into the specifics of all key gameplay systems, enlightening you with the outcomes of thousands of hours of research and analysis, supported by a direct channel to the CD Projekt Red dev team. Armed with this, nothing will stop you from turning your vision of V into exactly the kind of Night City legend you've been dreaming of. Produce every quest. Most quests in Cyberpunk 2077 can be accomplished in different ways. In all cases, the guide's walkthroughs provide you with annotated maps and visual insights on optional paths and interesting features. We draw your attention to routes and possibilities yielding a higher return. And as always, you decide how to proceed based on personal preferences and the abilities of your character. Direct your adventure. Cyberpunk 2077's adventure offers many branching paths that can lead to vastly different outcomes, affecting the life or death of important characters, romances, and yes, game endings. All of these are covered in the guide in ways that ensure you never miss a thing, yet without giving away any surprises. The guide includes an exclusive flowchart that offers an overview showing how all the jobs are unlocked and interconnected. If you plan on plotting your own path through the game with a low level of assistance, this chart offers a spoiler-free presentation of when you can begin major story episodes and side missions. They also developed a completion roadmap highlighting optional objectives and covering all the momentous decisions that you can make along the way, such as choices with long-term consequences and unique collectibles that you have just one chance to get a hold of, which will likely consist of things like weapons, vehicles, and apparel. Last, but certainly not least, every quest walkthrough in the guide draws your attention to critical decisions and opportunities in the game, as and when you encounter them. All of these heads up are entirely spoiler free. Now, I don't know how they went about making this informative guide spoiler free, but it's great to hear that it won't require any major story related spoilers to use the guide for making informed choices. I can definitely say this will make my life a lot easier at launch. There is both a standard edition, which is a soft cover that costs $24.99 US, $32.99 Canadian, and $39.95 Australian, and a collector's edition, which is a hardcover that costs $39.99 US, $49.99 Canadian, and $59.95 Australian. The collector's edition also has a bonus visual tour of Night City's unrestrained hospitality and leisure industries through a selection of images from poster and TV campaigns, along with associated branding which leaves the collector's edition at 496 pages, while the standard edition has 464. It will also launch on the same day as the game and will guide you along your journey if you so choose. It's available across many online retailers, so you should be able to get your hands on it as I've already ordered one myself. Now, another thing I've ordered myself is a second copy of Cyberpunk 2077, but this time, on GOG. The reason for that is the latest reveal of the exclusive digital comic, Cyberpunk 2077 Big City Dreams, which is available for anyone who buys the game on GOG.com. Now to clarify, it's not a pre-order bonus, as the game doesn't have any pre-order bonuses, it's just an exclusive bonus for anyone that buys the game on GOG. Now for anyone in China that is in the market for a new phone, a Cyberpunk 2077 and OnePlus collaboration was revealed earlier the other day during the OnePlus 8T event. There's a limited Cyberpunk 2077 edition of the smartphone coming soon, and more details on this China exclusive partnership will be announced in early November. Not that I think I have many viewers from China, but I still thought it was cool to mention. Another thing that I'm sure will only interest a very small number of you is the confirmed release date for Cyberpunk 2077 on Google Stadia, as it was announced during the event that Cyberpunk 2077 is coming to Google Stadia on November 19th. 
which means it's launching on Google Stadia at the same time as all other platforms. That means you'll be able to play the game on Google Stadia through your PC with Google Chrome, on an Android device such as your phone or tablet with the Stadia app, and on your TV with a Stadia controller and Chromecast Ultra. I'm personally not interested in game streaming services whatsoever, but if that's all you're able to afford or your preferred way to play for whatever reasoning, I'm happy for you. This isn't really negative news, just not something that the vast majority of people care about. Of course, in between all the trailers and behind the scenes at the event, we also got our typical dev insights. This time, Night City Wire host Holly Bennett had some questions for Paul DeLessi, senior vehicle artist. The highlights consists of details on racing, saving and summoning vehicles, and some of the interesting details on Johnny Silverhand's Porsche. So I'll play those clips and see you back here in a moment. So what about racing then? Will there be racing? Because I know people have been asking. Yes, we're absolutely going to have several races in the game. Different locations, if you know you're going to be driving in the Badlands. Maybe bring a Nomad car, because it's just built to driving in the Badlands. But if you know you're going to be racing in Night City, just bring the hottest wheels you've got, because you're going to need all the power you can get. No matter where you're racing, though, you need to bring a gun, because this is Night City and you never know what's going to happen. Let's talk about like storing and calling cars, because we know people can steal them. But what if somebody's found a car and they absolutely love this particular one? Is there a way for players to kind of build that collection? And then how do they actually, you know, summon them? Well, uh, summoning cars works pretty much the same as you would summon Roach in The Witcher 3. Your transportation may or may not show up on a roof somewhere. Uh, but, you know, we're still working on fixing some bugs here and there. But yeah, if there's a car that you really, really like very much, if you can't wait to own a Quadra or a Type 66, you'll get a message from your fixer and says, hey, Got a Quadra for sale for you, you want to buy it? All you have to do is drive over, pay the money, and you've got your very own Quadra. Not to mention that every single vehicle that you buy, every single player vehicle, is absolutely unique in every way. It's got a unique interior, unique exterior, paint job. Um, you know, it'll sound different, but it'll also handle different. So in the video, we did mention there was space for a true automotive icon. Uh, do you want to reveal uh, what that actually is? Of course, the, the car in question here is uh, Johnny Silverhand's car. And Johnny Silverhand is, well, he's a big rocker boy and he needs some wheels to match. So we gave him a 911 Porsche from 1977, which means in 2077, Johnny's car is going to be exactly 100 years old. So that was a good amount of information, but the final bit of information that came out of this event was thanks to an AMA with Miles Tost, senior level designer for Cyberpunk 2077, with questions being asked by the two co-hosts, Alana Pierce and Jesse Cox, on Twitch Gaming Cyberpunk 2077 Night City Wired Episode 4 official post show. So this information is best from the mouth of Miles Tost himself, but the Q&A unfortunately has copyrighted music, so it will be linked down in the description below, and I will run through the highlights with you here. So the game will of course have a day and night cycle. What's important to note though is that it will affect more than just the lighting. It's not just like a lights on lights off situation. It changes the NPCs that are out in the world, the activities going on, and the overall feel of Night City. It can also change how dangerous it is thanks to the different NPCs that are out in the world. It will also include a dynamic weather system which NPCs will react to. So for example if it's raining NPCs will pull out umbrellas and puddles will form on the ground which will then fade as the sun comes out. Now one of the things I found most interesting from this AMA is the fact that you cannot keep stolen vehicles. You can only keep vehicles that you buy or acquire yourself through missions and activities, which actually makes a lot of sense. And the good thing to note here is that you can acquire any vehicle in the game legitimately and keep it, which ties us in the fact that was mentioned earlier by Paul that yes, you do indeed have a garage you can store vehicles in, which you can go to and get your vehicles manually or call them to your location. We also learned that while there isn't any actual vehicle customization, you can pick and choose from the different variants of said vehicle. And to end off the AMA, we got a solid confirmation that there will indeed be unique, one-of-a-kind weapons and vehicles, which we also already knew, but we also learned that we can loot cyberware, which he avoided answering if you could loot cyberware directly from corpses, but it was heavily implied. So for that, we'll have to wait and see. I almost feel like that could even be its own perk 
called Scavenger. The final thing I would like to note is that Night City Wire Episode 5 is confirmed. And we'll be back with Night City Wire Episode 5 soon. So we'll be getting even more in-depth details on the game before launch. I'll of course live stream Episode 5 whenever it comes around. I'd love to see you all there when it takes place, and I'll of course let you know when it's taking place once we get that news. Now before we end off this video, keep in mind that I will have the massive breakdown and analysis videos out very soon for both the Rides of the Dark Future and 2077 in style trailers, which you will not want to miss. I'll also be releasing the Gangs of Night City trailer analysis video after that, which has been near completion for over a week. I just haven't had the time to wrap it up. But that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe to the fight if you haven't already, and ring that bell icon to stay in all of my future videos. It would be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy signing off.